Today, we're going to start our unit on genetics. So you're going to go into your Google Classroom. And in your Google Classroom, you're going to find the Quizlet for this unit. You need to spend about five minutes on that Quizlet. And then move into um, your guided notes on genetics. So this is the first slide and I've enlarged this um, chart just to make it easier to see and I've shifted some of the pictures here. But um, what you can do at home and you're not gonna be able to type on this, um, we're gonna do this together in class to see how many people um, have these um, traits and how many people don't. Um, so just know that this is here, um, look through it, see if you can, um, if you have these traits or you don't. Uh, then we're gonna move on to filling in some of the guided notes today. And um, then we're gonna work on some Punnett squares next week. So on slide three, genetics is the science of heredity and of the mechanisms by which traits are passed from parents to the offspring. Heredity is the transmission of characteristics from the parents to the offspring. So remember, you know, we talked about those gametes or sex cells and how the process of mitosis and meiosis works to form those gametes, how DNA uh, is duplicated and also how it goes through protein synthesis using those ribosomes. So now we're going further into that DNA to um, find out how those traits actually come to be. So it all starts with Gregor Mendel, who you've probably heard of since middle school. He entered a monastery in Austria at age 21 and was tasked with maintaining the garden there. At age 29, he enrolled at the University of Vienna and studied science and mathematics, which proved to be very useful in his research on heredity. Mendel studied many plants, but he's most known for his work with pea plants. I guess I could enlarge this, sorry. There we go. Mendel studied seven characteristics of pea plants. A characteristic is a heritable feature such as flower color or plant height. Each characteristic he studied had two differences. For example, height was either tall or short. A trait is gen a genetically determined difference or a variant of a characteristic. So for example, tall or short plant, or for humans, a widow's peak or a straight hairline. I would have a straight hairline, but some people have this little hairline that comes down to a V that's considered a widow's peak. So here are the seven characteristics that he looked at. And then what he found out was there were certain characteristics that were dominant, which basically meant they were seen more. And then there were recessive traits, which only appeared every so often. And so he's drawn out drawings and, and um, given them descriptions. Mendel collected the seeds from his pea plants and carefully rec recorded the plant's traits. He planted the seeds the following season and observed patterns. He compared them to the parent plants. He controlled how the plants were pollinated, so basically self-pollination occurs when the pollen is transferred from the same plant. And then cross-pollination occurs between two plants. So self-pollination is when the plant just automatically is able to, uh, it basically has both the ovaries and the uh, stamen. So this is the male part here, and this is the female part. So if a plant has that, they can pollinate themselves and, and just keep going. But if um, you're dealing with things like zucchini or squash, you're gonna have some plants that are, or pumpkin. In my case, I planted pumpkins this last year, and until the weather cooled, I only got the male, um, the male plants. And then once the weather changed, then the female plants started and then the plants could cross pollinate. Pea plants typically self pollinate, but can be controlled by removing the anthers. So the pollen producing male structure, and then you can actually go and transfer that pollen like they're showing here. For his experiments, Mendel created a cross true bred plant 
through a series of self-pollinations until he was sure all of the plants were purebred. You might also see this as true bred or homozygous. And homozygous is a vocab word. You have to understand what that means. And basically homozygous means we have two traits that are the same. So we either have two dominant traits or two recessive traits. The word homo means same. Mendel called the true bred plant parents the P generation, meaning the parental generation. And then the offspring of the P generation are called the first filial generation or the F1 generation. And then we can go to F2 and just keep, you know, going through that pattern. But most of the time you're going to see P, F1, and maybe F2. And this is a picture of Mendel's garden taken in 1996. Um, they have kept this garden going. So I think that's kind of cool. The offspring of the F1 generation are called the second filial generation or F2 generation. So here's kind of a graphic for you. We've got the two homozygous uh, parents. This one is designated with two big P's because it's that's the dominant trait is the purple color. And this is homozygous, what we call recessive because it's the white color that's not as common. When we breed these two, we get something called heterozygous. We designate that with one big, one small letter. And then when we breed those together, we end up with three purple and one white because it was still carrying that recessive trait. So here are his results. Let me move my picture over here. So dominant versus recessive in all of these you see that the dominant form shows up way more, the recessive form not as much, and then he did ratios just kind of get the breakdown of this. What you want to understand is anytime we cross a homozygous dominant with a homozygous recessive, you're going to get a three to one ratio. So if we rounded all of these numbers here, it's all going to round to three. So we're going to get a three to one ratio. In one of the experiments, Mendel crossed a true bred green seed pea and a true bred yellow seed. All of the F1 offspring were yellow seeds. In the F2 generation, a cross of the yellow F1 offspring, the resulting offspring were 6,022 yellow and 2,001 green, which gave it a 3.01 yellow to one green ratio. And so he predicted the ratio to be three to one. Mendel determined that something controlled the characteristics in the plants and called them control factors. He determined that the pair of factors must be controlling each trait and the factors are now called alleles. So here's where we're getting into some of these um, vocabulary words and I've used them already um, multiple times. And so we're getting in here to where I am uh, going to continue to be kind of enforcing these. So dominant is the allele or one form of a gene that masks the other when carried by only one of the homologous chromosomes. It's always represented by a capital letter. So if we were saying that yellow was a dominant trait, we would use a capital Y. We always use the letter of the dominant traits. So the first letter of whatever the dominant trait is. The letter of the dominant trait is typically used when choosing a letter for a Punnett square. When we talk about recessive traits, it describes a trait or allele that is expressed when two recessive alleles for the same characteristic are inherited, except for sex-linked traits. And we'll get into that uh, later on. And they're gonna be represented by a lowercase letter. That lowercase letter comes from whatever the dominant trait was. So even though that the, the recessive trait here is green, we knew the, the dominant trait was yellow. So green's gonna be represented by a little y. So you really need to focus in on what letter will be the dominant and make sure you're using that same letter for the recessive trait. A genotype is the organism's genetic makeup or allele or factors that the organism inherits from the parents. It's represented by the letters. For example, big Y, big Y would be homozygous dominant. 
big Y, little y would be called heterozygous and little y, little y would be homozygous recessive. So think of genotype as the actual genetic combination. So it's the genetic combination genotype. For phenotype, it's the organism's appearance. Note the phenotype does not always indicate the genotype properly. Environmental factors such as nutrition can impact the organism's phenotype. So the way I've always taught this is phenotype is what it physically looks like. So that pH in phenotype, pH in physical appearance. So it's what we actually see. So if we had that homozygous dominant trait, a big Y, big Y, it will be yellow because that's the dominant trait. If we have the heterozygous combination of big Y, little y, it's still gonna be yellow. Oops, it's still gonna be yellow because we have one of those traits that is the big capital letter, which means that trait is going to mask the recessive trait. And then little y, little y, that homozygous recessive would mean we have a green pea pod or pea color. So you've heard me use these words as well. When both pair of alleles are alike. Now I haven't really used the word allele, but these letters you're using are the alleles. They're the specific trait. Homozygous dominant, big Y, big Y. Homozygous recessive, little y, little y. Heterozygous, when the two alleles in the pair are different. So that's that big Y, little y. So here we're looking at the chromosomes and we can see big B, big B would be homozygous, dominant, because it's got the big capital letter. Here we have big B, little b, little b, big B. Now, when I teach you Punnett squares, we're always gonna put the big B first. Um, it's easier to know which pairs are essentially the same. So those would be homozygous chromosome or alleles on these chromosomes. And then homozygous recessive are the two little b's. So we're gonna ease into genetics problems. Um, on Monday, we're actually going to do a bunch of these in groups. So hopefully it will become much easier. You should have had this in middle school and you should have um, had this uh, in ag when you took ag in ninth grade. So the Punnett square is a diagram used to predict the probability of the offspring in a genetic cross. A monohybrid cross is a cross invo involving only one trait or characteristic. So that's what you're seeing here. This is a monohybrid cross and we're just dealing with one characteristic. So the problem here in the example says, complete a cross between a short pea plant with a heterozygous tall pea plant identify the genotypic and phenotypic ratios and finish the Punnett square. So since this is an example, if we were doing this out, we'd have, here is our um, heterozygous tall, big T, little t, and here is our short pea plant. It can only be short if it's homozygous recessive because it told us here that being heterozygous tall means tall is the dominant trait. So we use a T and a big T means tall, little t means short. So when we, oops, sorry, hit the button. When we do this cross, we're basically splitting this big T, little t. So it gets put here and little t, little t gets put here. Then what we do is we take this and bring it over and this and bring it down. Like I said before, we're putting the large T first. So that would be big T, little t. Then we come down here. This one goes over. This one comes down. We get little t, little t. Then this one would come over. This one would come down. We would get big T, little t. This one would come over and this one would come down and we would get little t, little t. And I'm not sure why, but this example does not have the correct answer in it. So I'm going to fix that right now. So the genotypic ratio of this cross would be two big T little t and two little t little t. And then the phenotypic ratio for this would be 
too tall and too short. It's very weird that um, I had the wrong answers there. Okay. So those are the correct answers. We'd have big T, little t, big T, little t. That's our genotype. Little t, little t, little t, little t. That's our other genotype. The big T would mean we have tall plants and we have two boxes that have a big T in them. So that gives us two tall. And we have two boxes that have that homozygous recessive um, combination. So that gives us two short. All right, that's all for today.